Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Dyna Cube, And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to refresh a single table in your Power BI model. Stay tuned. If you're finding this for the very first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date from all the videos from both Adam and this guy. All right, so you've created this huge data model, published it out to the service, and someone says, hey, I know we said we only want to keep one year worth of data, but we've changed our mind. We want to keep three, four, five, some number of years greater than one. And you're like, oh my God, I just published this thing out. It took a long time to refresh and I got to refresh the whole model. No, you don't. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. So. Before I head over to my laptop, you will need premium per user or premium to accomplish this. Okay. So you guys know I like to do enough of all this talking. Let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So let's say you've created a data model. Let's imagine you had lots and lots of tables here. And when you initially built this, they said, we only need one year worth of data. And then someone comes back and they go, well, we need more than that. If you're in the desktop, it's easy. You just right click refresh the data and it'll reach back to the source, do all of its work, pull that data in the desktop. And I've just updated a single table. You can see right now it's 2021 and 2020 data. But what about the data model that's published out to the service? How do I refresh this one? Well, if you just have a pro license, kind of stuff. If you are using premium per user or premium, I've got a couple ideas for you. All right, let me show you what I'm talking about. If you're out in the service, the first thing you want to do, you want to get your XMLA endpoint, go to your workspace, choose settings, go to premium and grab your XMLA endpoint. Once you have your XMLA endpoint, download and install Manage for Studio. It's free. Choose connect choose analysis services, pop your endpoint in and click connect. You'll go through an authentication process. Then you see your databases, locate the database that contains the table that you want to refresh, expand tables, and then you'll see the tables that's available. Right click on that table and you'll see right there, it says process table. A little window will open up and just for the sake of brevity, we're just going to go process the full, but there's lots of other processing options out there. I will include a link to the documentation on processing options in the description below for now. Now choose the process full from the mode drop down list and you click OK. It's going to go and pull that data from the source, refresh that table. And then the next time you head over to that report, just that single table has been refreshed. All the other table in your models, they're just left alone. Now you're not going to go through a refresh process. You're not going to have to wait a very long time because you're just refreshing that single table. There's other things you can do with different processing options to further streamline this, but we're just going to focus on process full. You can see the processing is in progress. It shows how many rows it processed. If I head over to my Power BI report, click refresh, and there you'll see there's two years worth of data. That was easy. Just process a single table. Yo, Patrick, What's the other ways? That's number one, right? Number two, you can actually use an XMLA script. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Back over in Management Studio, right click on the table again. You can choose Process Table. Right at the top, you'll see Script, and I'm going to script this to my clipboard. Go ahead and choose Cancel. And then right at the top, there's some options here for different types of query. Go ahead and choose Analysis Services XMLA Query. It's going to require you to connect one more time, and then go ahead and paste that in. It's saying, hey, there's my refresh type, and we'll talk about this in a second. That's the database, and that's the table. And you can change this. There's some other options you can set, but what we're going to focus on right now here is the type. I have a doc right here that I like to use that lists out the different types. You can see it's full, clear values, calculate data only, automatic, and defrag. We're just going to use full. So I head over here, change that from automatic to full. Going to modify my view to just include a little more data. Then we'll run this and you'll see a warning that says, hey, we're moving you over to another node. That's OK. Let it run. And then you'll see here that it's done. If I hit over to Power BI, I should see an additional year worth of data in my model. Now we see 2019. So you can use an XMLA script if you want to, and you can do lots of different things with that script. The third easy way, if you happen to have a license, you can use Tabular Editor 3.0. Let me show you. Open up Tabular Editor 3.0, click on Open Model from DB, pop in your XMLA point when you click OK, it's going to give you a list of databases. Choose your database. Click on the Tom Explorer and you'll see the tables here. Right click on your table, choose refresh table. You'll see the options there. I'm going to choose my full refresh. Go over to the data refresh tab. You can see it's refreshing. I like this because I can actually pause it or you see right here, it shows me how long it took. It's finished seven seconds. I'm going to head back over to Power BI and do a refresh. And boom, there's 2018. All right, pretty easy. 
2018 started on January 1st, 2018. It ended on December 30th. Stop. I got to unplug that thing before I start recording. Anyway, three really easy ways. Now you may be thinking, Patrick, well, I want to write some code. I like to write some code. I want to script this stuff out and do some different types of automation. Well, you can. You can use PowerShell to do the refresh. You can actually use C Sharp. Maybe you have Visual Studio Code to do it and they both will work. Or or if you want to really get elegant about this, you can head over to Elegant BI, which is a blog post by Michael Kowalski. He's on the Power BI Cat team. Michael wrote two really good blog posts that I like to reference when people ask him about refreshing single objects or multiple objects in a semantic model. He's got one where he talks about data refresh with tabular editor. He writes some scripts that'll iterate through the selected tables. You can even process multiple partitions. In Management Studio, you can also process specific partitions. I didn't mention that earlier but you can do it as an option on the right click you choose partitions and you can refresh individual partitions i didn't have any partitions but this is a really elegant way if you're into scripting you can do it that way but the really cool one is michael actually created a tool called process manager where you can go through it and you can choose the items the objects the tables that you want to refresh or the specific partitions that you want to refresh and then you can do it in a batch so maybe i want to process them one at a time and have that all done via scripting and i could do that with probably a premium azure now service or SQL Server analysis service and using this tool. But what's really great about it is it's all integrated into Azure DevOps. All right. So you can use the three easy ways or you can use the scripting options or you can use, you know, the processes that Michael have outlined in this blog post. All right. What do you guys think? You any questions, any comments? Are you processing a single table? I'd love to know how you're doing. You know what to do. Let's continue the conversation where in the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel, hit that subscribe button, like my video, you know, Big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.